Hello and welcome to Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. What kind of game? Checkers. Not deer. Oh. Mm. Let's talk about what we read kind of game. Oh. <laughs> uh. Let's meet the panel. Lily, Charlie, and Josh. And today's a very special day because it is Lily's birthday. Happy birthday! Woo! So, for Lily's birthday, Happy what are birthday we going to over? You. What are we going over today? Today we'll be discussing Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. All right. Mm. That was a shocking right story. Up. Great, what great piece of feminist literature. That you would like. So I do is, love this. This book. is your first present. Yes. We'll present to you your second present at the end of the episode. Mm. What's the first question? All right, panel. How would you best describe Molly Bolt's attitude and? Does it reflect the message Brown is trying to get across? I see Molly Bolt as being a rebel for her cause. I, I was going to say, she's a rebel. <clears throat> yeah, rebel. she's tough. She Doesn't the book open up with her getting in like a yard fight and beating this boy up? I thought it, that, and there, it had to do with the prank as well. Yeah, like they, she like... Uh, she put uh, rabbit droppings in a box of... Some made raisins. Yeah, and and then, mm -hmm. he, because that's they the, actually ate them. Yeah. yeah, and then it really, uh, there it really starts out with a punch uh, when uh, broccoli, uh, when she was much younger, uh, uh, th they would have this uh, business where uh, yeah, business already. people would pay money to see uh, her broccoli's. Uh, a certain parts. Yeah, I was. Lady that's parts. what I was talking about. They were. They would pay to have her show them her genitals. Mm -hmm. It was broccoli too, and so it was male uh, parts yep. as well. Mm. But yeah, I think it was a. I read it and it shocked me because I'm really not going into this work. No offense, but it was. It was a good book, and um, it was. I think a nickel to look and a dime to touch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Just like, well, a dime could buy a lot then. Outside of Molly's interest for uh, women and engaging in uh, uh, intercourse with uh, women, uh, Molly also uh, felt that uh, she uh, that it was life is meant to uh, be enjoyed. It's meant to be enjoyed, Why and it's not thoughts? meant to be held back. It, it's meant to break away from tradition because yeah, you're not, you don't have to be in the square box. Molly's con the characters, uh, boys are meant to do boy things, and, and girls, girls are meant to do girl things. That is correct. Uh, yeah, but she's pranking. She's like a, got a little stand. Like I'll show you my. Oh, I was almost. I was about to say who something. Was, who was the goody, the goody two shoes that uh, thought that she was supposed to be uh, Mary in the. But uh, the teacher thought that uh, Molly did such a good job that uh, she felt Molly should be Mary. Right. And the goody two shoes that followed these uh, uh, status quo uh, was uh, Joseph. It's a funny it's comment, funny. too, because we have the whole idea of Mary, mother of Jesus, the immaculate conception, and yet somebody who is LGBT, who is viewed by certain sects of the religious community as being tainted playing the Blessed Mother. Mm. So it turns the whole thing on its head. And you can see that at the play as well. <laughs> you can see the fact that there's this scuffle going on and then the Mary and Joseph are arguing. And mm -hmm. It makes for... Uh, it, it, it creates some kind of... Uh, and the whole idea of a female Joseph, you know, girls playing guys as being an allegory for lesbianism goes even back to Shakespeare with Twelfth Night, with the character of Viola when she comes to a, what's her name, and she's dressed as a boy, right? She's yeah, dressed as Sebastian, and she says to uh, the queen, she's like, I think you're not what you are, which is like she's being tongue-in-cheek, like <laughs> I think... In Cymbeline as well, there mm -hmm. is uh, a girl going uh, dressing as a, a boy in order to uh, pursue the uh, person of their Oh, look, the sun. Oh, my eye. It happens in As You Like It, too. I think it's it that too. one over there. When, uh, when Rosalind is trying to... Uh, when Rosalind runs into her ex and he doesn't know it's her, 
So she comes to him dressed as a boy because the boy is still in love with Rosalind. Mm -hmm. So she comes dressed as a boy and she's like, I'll teach you how to woo her again. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole sort of gender bending thing. Yeah, but, the gender point, bender. but the point I was making was that gender upheaval as sort of a pivot point for queer themes has gone back a long time. It doesn't start with this novel. Yeah, this novel it's is gone back. On a trend. This novel, unlike uh, novels, for, or back then they did it in a very uh, vague kind of way. Subtle? Yeah, in a very subtle way. Mita, uh, Rita Mae Brown really... She comes out with it. She dove into it. Yeah, she breaks barriers. She is, she is so brave. She's right up there with Audre Lorde. You go, and you go. fight for your rights. I think we should move on. I think we have, uh, we're going to be going uh, a lot into uh, that area. Uh, mm -hmm. What's her next question? All right, it kind of overlaps here with what you're already discussing, but do you feel that the gray areas are present in this novel when addressing LBG, what is LGBTQ Megan? issues oh. in this novel, or is there consistency within the old world against the new world views? Okay, I think what you're trying to say, uh, there are characters within the text right. that directly. are very black or white yeah. and uh, very abstract. The most uh, clear is uh, Carrie who is the aunt that adopts Molly yeah. and uh, and she brings her up in a proper, she tries to yeah, she civilized. tries to get her civilized just but like, a, like how, how, right. why do you keep reading my thoughts at the third <laughs> time today? <laughs> Uh, Happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. It doesn't work at all. No, it doesn't. <laughs> she ends up locked in a basement, too. Yes. <laughs> so. If you haven't read it, I like yeah, her a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. It's rough and tough, says Barnacle Bill the Sailor. Uh, you have Car uh, Molly is the representation of the gray area in a world of black and white. The fact that we live in a world, or we're living in a world that's dominated by uh, the status quos that are meant to uh, tell people what to do. Yeah, because even by being absolutely against the grain, you have to acknowledge the existence of a grain. Mm -hmm. And I think that Brown does a very good job. I concur. Uh, uh, creating that in order. Uh, having these uh, contrasting characters for uh, Look at me, I still arguably look like a boy, whatever else that means. Who says there's a feminine appearance? Who says girls wear makeup and play with dolls? You, you're, you are quite a rebel, I will say that. Mm -hmm. I do like dolls though. Yeah. I like that. As long I like as you like figures. dolls and you enjoy playing with dolls. <laughs> Next question. All right. Do you believe this is a key piece of literature that paved the way to addressing LGBTQ issues I think it's openly? One, yes, yes. It's, it's one in a long line. It starts with, like, Price of Salt, goes to this, goes to uh, Am I Blue, Giovanni's Room, Other Voices, Other Rooms. If you want to go to poetry, uh, Howell is very yes. of... Yes. Uh, Allen Ginsberg, yes. Yeah, Allen Ginsberg, oh, Howell. That's a big grant, by the way. Oops, where the way? Check episode five. Yes, I love. There's Howell is actually such a milestone because it's the first time you get that line, and yet he turns everything around. All the perceptions the straight community might have had, and acknowledges the basic reality of homosexual joy. And it's just, just check so out the uh, the uh, illustrated version that I don't want oh, to Eric Drucker's drawings. I love Eric Drucker's drawings. But going back, I've to actually met him. Oh, okay. At City Lights Bookstore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Going back to uh, Ruby for a Jungle, uh, this one, uh, this novel is able to address the issue in the narrative form and create a story to which this individual is brought into conflict because of the decisions that they make. Plus the whole idea of lesbian novels prior to this, prior to something like Price Assault, it's one of the first that doesn't end in death or marriage, heterosexual marriage. You, there's like, the lesbian couple runs off into the sunset together, but they die in the end. They're hunted down, there's a shootout, whatever. Or there's the tradition where 
one of the girls gets a husband, gets some kids, and one never sees her again and reflects on nostalgia, right? Nostalgia, oh, memories. Mm -hmm. There's something, uh, and then you get Violet Leduc with her memoir, La Batarde, which is one of my favorite books in the world. Read that. I've read from that. Were you there when I did that at the open mic? You know, take off your nightgown, Isabel said. I want to say that, yeah, if, yeah. It, if it was this most recent one, yes. Mm hmm. Do you have any uh, commentary about this now, Charlie? Uh, it, well, like I said, it's very strong. Um, <laughs> any can, final words, Charlie? I w can I say something? Yes. Okay, yes, okay. we're good. I we're have done. something for you if you stay silent. <laughs> Do you? Yes. <laughs> Happy uh, birthday, Lily! I got you something. Nice big bag for you. I, um... Uh, what? Yeah, happy yep, birthday. We got you a grapefruit for your birthday. Indeed. I do mm -hmm. love grapefruit. Yes, we know. Oh. It's, a, it's, it's a good book. Enjoy. I think... I, I want to... <laughs> the dangers of... I want to say that... I want to untie a knot, so you might have to do this for me. Oh, God. I would say I'm that... I'm better at tying knots than untying I'm, knots, oddly I'm enough. I'm outside... I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I will say that I'm not. You have to cut her loose, you know, screams right Oh, in. God, this episode, <laughs> sorry, everyone. This episode has gone far off the deep end due to Lily's overexcitement. It's her birthday, forgive her. Give me that. Yeah. Forgive her, I, dear I, audience. I'm, I'm outside of the, uh, the LB, uh, LGBTQ realm, but approaching this book, I thought that it was quite a decent read, and I really, uh, there were... Granted, there are some topics that even I think anybody it, it takes them uh, getting uh, used to. But I did. I really liked the story, and I thought and that did. Molly was a very. Uh, it was just very shocking was a, at first. She was real, was what it was. She was real for her time, and there are people that are rebellious and think in this particular yes. way. Plus, it was also, this book was written in 1973. The 70s were known as the um, as an open time, so. That's mm -hmm. the rise of queer pride. That's the rise of <coughs> glad. That's Stonewall generation. The sexual revolution. But yet the 70s, and good music. 60s and 70s. It was still, the 70s. During the seventies, it was still uh, there was a proposition uh, <laughs> during uh, late there were bills where sodomy was illegal. Eight, yes, which uh, even <clears throat> I think it's just been these last. Where remember when when sure. Obama ran on his first uh, during his first election? It's soft, isn't it? He was very uh, he was very iffy on his views, but he has since him and the Democratic Party have since uh, transitioned. Ran for his second. And there's yeah. actually one Do where uh, it's Prop 6 <laughs> where open LGBTs can't be teachers. And that's sort of on the books in certain states. It's like unspoken, but there. It's unfortunate. I know. And the struggle continues. I hate getting instructor in one of my classes, though. Uh, well, not in this state. Uh, this state's totally fine. Right. If you're interested in reading uh, Rita Mae Brown's Ruby for Jungle, I got this copy published by uh, Bantam Books. Uh, I got it off of Amazon. You should be able to get it for a reasonable price in different alternate outlets. I, I haven't found it at a flea market yet, but... Well, I found fleas on a flea market. If you go to, uh, oof, oof. you could probably go to some well, you find bargain fleas, places like, and don't get no, this. Don't, no, 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 no. Have to Loving a woman who wasn't mm. clean. Enjoy your grapefruit, Louie. Hey, Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading. And happy birthday. And happy birthday, Lily. Thank you very much.